This tutorial is all about acid-base titrations. That's when you add an acid carefully to a base or a base carefully to an acid using a burette and look at the changes in the pH as the uh, reaction progresses. You need to be able to both interpret a pH curve that may have been uh, produced during a titration or indeed to be able to draw your own pH titration curve for the titration of an acid with an alkali. The acid base reaction produces a salt plus water. So for example, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide would make a salt, sodium chloride and water. Because you end up with a neutral solution at pH 7, the reaction is called neutralization and the pH changes during the reaction. What we're going to look at next is how that changes when it's plotted onto a graph. Let's imagine that we're starting in a flask with 25 mils or 25 cubic centimetres of 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter solution of hydrochloric acid. That's what's in our flask at the start. What's in the burette above it will be a 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter solution of a base, sodium hydroxide. So we're adding the base to the acid. Unsurprisingly, at the start, before any of the sodium hydroxide has been added, we've got a very low pH, a pH of 1, representing a strong acid. Notice that as the sodium hydroxide is added, 5, 10, 15, the pH of the solution does not change very much at all. It's only when we get close to neutralization where 25 cubic centimetres of the sodium hydroxide will be added, where there is a sudden change in pH. The pH rises very rapidly through pH 7, which is where the uh, solution will then be neutral, but then continues through pH 7 towards alkaline pHs of 12 or 13. Once the pH has changed through to about 13, when it's a strong alkaline solution, addition of more sodium hydroxide makes very little difference to the overall pH of the solution. So at this equivalence point, the pH has changed very, very rapidly within perhaps only a few drops of the sodium hydroxide added. That's why it's very important to do titrations carefully and to add the sodium hydroxide only a few drops at a time when we're getting close to neutralization. How do we know we're getting close to neutralization? Well, we'd use an indicator. Here, the indicator being used is phenylphthalein, which is colorless in an acid and a pink color in the uh, alkali. At around pH 7, there will be a sudden change, maybe over only a drop of the sodium hydroxide, a sudden change from colours to pink, and that tells us when neutralisation is complete. Of course, if we're measuring, as we are here, with a pH probe as well, then neutralisation is reached, the equivalence point is reached, where the pH is exactly 7, where the solution is neutral. Here's a past exam question. Claire makes ammonium nitrate. Look at the apparatus she uses. Well, she's got a burette containing acid in this case, and that's being added to a solution underneath of ammonia, 25 cubic centimetres of ammonia. She uses 25 cubic centimetres of this alkali called ammonia, and she slowly adds the acid until the alkali is just neutralised. The pH value in the beaker changes as the acid is added. Describe how the pH value changes. Well, the pH change will be from an alkaline pH, quite a high pH, probably of around 12 or so, and it will reduce as the acid is being added. So how the pH value changes, it will decrease from a high pH to 7 and explain why. We'll say here the acid is neutralizing 
the alkali and the acid has a pH less than 7. And here's the answer to that question. Two marks. One mark for saying that the pH is decreasing or getting lower and one mark for saying that the acid is neutralizing the ammonia or that the acid has a pH of less than 7. A second question. Zach investigates the neutralization of dilute nitric acid. He measures out 25 cubic centimeters of a 0 0.150 mole per cubic decimeter dilute nitric acid solution and he puts that into the beaker. Um, Zach reacts the dilute nitric acid with an alkali potassium hydroxide solution. That's in the burette as you can see. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus he uses. There's a data logger connected to a pH probe and Zach slowly adds the alkali to the dilute acid and uses a pH probe to measure the pH of the solution in the beaker. The pH of the solution in the beaker changes as more and more potassium hydroxide is added. Draw a sketch graph to show how the pH changes. Well, there's no volumes of potassium hydroxide on the scale on the bottom, so we've got to kind of guess the scale. But essentially, if we're starting off with nitric acid in the flask, then the pH is going to be around about 1. It's going to stay at 1 while more is added, but when it gets close to neutralization, it's going to shoot up through past 7 up to a fairly high pH and then it's going to rise very slightly more until it levels out. Zach uses 25 cubic centimeters of a 0 0.150 mole per cubic decimeter dilute nitric acid solution. How many moles of nitric acid does Zach use? First we need to convert his number of cubic centimetres into a number of cubic decimetres and that's done by dividing by a thousand. So first of all we're going to say that the volume equals 25 centimetres cubed equals 25 over a thousand equals 0.025 cubic decimetres. Now we remember the equation we learned earlier that the number of moles equals the concentration times the volume where the concentration is in moles per cubic decimeter and the volume is in cubic decimeters equals well the concentration is 0 0.150 times the volume which is 0. 0.025 with an answer of 0 0.00375 moles. Zach repeats the experiment but doesn't use the data logger and pH probe. He wants to find the volume of potassium hydroxide solution that will just neutralize the nitric acid so he puts two drops of litmus solution into the beaker. Now litmus is an indicator which is red in an acid and blue in alkali and changes at about pH 7. So how will Zach tell when the dilute nitric acid has just been neutralized? We could be general and say that there will be a sudden color change when a drop or two are added and the color change will be red to blue. The second question says explain why universal indicator would be less suitable than litmus solution. Uh, this is because it does not give a sharp color change. It changes color gradually.
so of course it's more difficult to tell when it's just changed uh, pH. Here are the answers of course. Uh, the graph that we drew, so long as it starts low, starts well below pH 7, finishes above pH 7, that's one mark, and if the general shape includes a, a very sharp change at pH 7, that's your second mark. The calculation was as I did before. Uh, neutralization, uh, as that will see a sudden color change, or a couple of drops, or one drop making an indicator change, or one drop making the indicator go from red to blue. And uh, Universal Indicator doesn't give a sudden change of color, it gives a continuous color change, or it's a mixed indicator, or a complex indicator would be fine.